We are less than a month away from the opening of Halloween Horror Nights 2021, and aww, I am so ready for the spooks. Universal revealed all the remaining houses and scare zones last Thursday, which was the 12th. Seriously, Universal, there wasn't a spooky day just one day later you could have announced it on. You're really throwing me off my schedule here, guys, but... Anyway, I'm Chris from Orlando. I'm here to run down all the houses and scare zones for this year's HHN and why you should scream with excitement. And before we really get into it, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to always on so you never miss more of these spooky videos. Go on, do it. Because if you don't, I'm going to jump scare you. Do it. Do it. You didn't do it, did you? I'm going to remember that for later. <laughs> but seriously, subscribe helps the channel grow. Bye! Let's start with the IP houses. Those houses based on already existing movies. Beetlejuice was the first house announced for this year and for good reason. It'll undoubtedly bring in the most casual audience to the event. Located in the Parade Warehouse, the same place where it was during HHN Light last year, when it was open for two days so that Universal could keep the rights for this year, I'm curious to see if they'll add anything new to the experience from last year. Just as long as they keep the mic'd up Beetlejuice at the front of the house talking to guests, this should be a great comedy house. Next up, we have the Haunting of Hill House, located at the second Parade Warehouse. Admittedly, I don't know a lot about this Netflix series, and, and it's definitely homework I gotta do before the event. I watched the first episode, and I got jump scared by a guy getting into bed. I hate this already. But looking at some of the spooks that'll be involved, and knowing the great deal of care Universal has taken with another Netflix show, I'm sure that this will be a terrifying house. Also, I feel really bad for whoever was cast as the Betnet Lady. Hope you got a good chiropractor. Finally, we have the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The first time old boy Leatherface has shown his many faces at the event in five years. Located in Soundstage 23, it should mean that this house will be able to do more than it did back in 2016 when it was in one of the sprung tents. But it remains to be seen what exactly new and exciting things they'll do with it. Also, I know this will only be based on the first one, but I hope Chop Talk makes a cameo. He's only ever appeared in Hollywood, and I think it'd be a cool Easter egg. Our first original house, which is technically based on an IP, but shut up as an original story, is Universal Monsters, The Bride of Frankenstein Lives. The creative directors of HHN know that The Bride of Frankenstein is popular, but she doesn't really do anything in the movie, only showing up for the last five minutes of it. So they decided to shine a spotlight on this icon. Also located at Soundstage 23, the story is that the bride actually survived the destruction of Frankenstein's castle at the end of the movie and is mourning the loss of her beloved and vowing to bring him back to life. The bride finds out that the blood of the brides of Dracula might hold the secret to bring the monster back and chaos ensues as the two sides battle it out. Yes, queens. This house was gorgeous when I went through it last year, and, and honestly, I can't wait to see what it's like when it's burning on all cylinders. The final house from HHN Light that's making its return is Revenge of the Tooth Fairy, and I hope you're not eating anything sweet while watching this footage. It's hard to think about now with the wide array of nice fairies running around, flying around? But the Fae used to be terrifying! This house takes the idea of the Two Fairy and adds that terror to it. Patrick Braillard, former creative director of HHN, had this to say about the backstory at a Megacon panel. So the fairy folk then demanded that every child give their milk teeth up. And the way that they pacify those children is by giving them money. So it was a it was a lengthy backstory, and I really hope that eventually they release it because it's a really it, I, I think it's some of my best work that I did there. He also mentioned that he wrote an entire children's storybook about the backstory for the house and it inspired the art style for the set. I remember walking into the first room during HHN Light and immediately thinking, oh, I hate everything about this, but in a good way. You're taken through this book as you see what happens to a spoiled young brat and his family when he refused to give up one of his baby teeth. The creature designs are... Fine, I guess? 
But what's really spooky is this tale that Nate Stevenson told. Um, and because I'm just so mad at Patrick for this. <laughs> but uh, from the time he started that till the time that house opened, every, and this is not a joke or a lie, this actually happened. Oh, every member of the creative development team had some sort of emergency, or, like huge oral surgery. We all had. Oh. <laughs> one by one by one by one. It's cursed. And I is it? <laughs> it, it, it is. <laughs> so if you walk through that house and then like, you know, you're eating a, a turkey leg or something the next, you know, out in the park and they're like, ah. Oh. <laughs> Entering from stage left for dead, we have Puppet Theater Captive Audience. Located in my old home of Sprung Tent 1, Puppet Theater takes place in the Grandeur Theater in San Francisco at the turn of the 20th century. An earthquake traps all the performance inside, and well, when you get abandoned under a bunch of rubble for years at a time with nothing to talk to but a bunch of puppets, you're bound to go insane. And they do! Turning the patrons who were trapped in the theater with them into puppets, they now look to do the same to the guests. Similar to how I got the heebie-jeebies from the first scene of Tooth Fairy, I'm sure there's a lot of people who just saw the name of the house, instantly thought of all the creepy puppets, and just went, nope. Blooming out of Sprung Tent 2, we have the wicked growth, realm of the pumpkin, and evil rot has taken hold of this land, giving rise to the Melon Lord! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, uh, to the rise of Jack, the Pumpkin King. No, no, that's the other part, uh, it's to summon the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown! Uh, closer, but it's still not right. Oh, it's, uh, just the Pumpkin Lord, um... Okay, cool. If you're wondering why I spent so much time on that bit, it's because, well, that's all we really know about this house at the moment. However, it sounds like it might be a mashup of Twisted Tradition from 2018 and Scarecrow the Reaping from 2017, which if this house is anything like Scarecrow, means we're in for a good time. Heading over to Shrek, we have Case Files Unearthed Legendary Truth. This is the house we know the least amount. It doesn't even have a details page on the HHM website, but there's a few things we do know. First off, apparently this house was supposed to be Billie Eilish last year, so whew, dodge the bullet there. Second, between the noir look, the shadowy creatures of all types, and the tentacles approaching our investigator, this feels kind of Lovecraftian. Without the racism! Yay! If we get a giant Cthulhu puppet in this house, it'll be everything I ever wanted. Third, the fact that this has the Legendary Truth subtitle is interesting. The Legendary Truth is a group of paranormal investigators investigating Bloody Mary in 2008. There was a lot of viral campaigns around the group for the event, with it implying that many of its members have now been corrupted by the evil surrounding the event, but since then they've only made a few small appearances. It feels like there's a lot more story to tell here, so it's good that it appears we're getting an origin story for the group with this house. We're actually going to put a pin in the final two houses for the moment and explore the scare zone starting at the Avenue of the Stars. 30 years! 30 fears. Some of your favorite monsters and psychos from the past showing up to haunt you once again. No clues on who will be there yet, and I just hope the icons will also be there so we can get pictures with them. But it should be a fun zone regardless. In the New York area, we have Seek and Destroy, which looks like it's a mix of Alien Invasion, The Matrix, and 1984. A being known as the Controller, who I'm guessing is the face here, has taken over the world and is using humans as fuel. Expect to see a lot of aliens, robots, and robot aliens, and maybe in a simulation on stage. Heading over to Central Park, we have Gorewood Forest. This zone is actually a sequel to the large overarching story from HHN 15, taking place in the land of Terra Crutus and man I hope I'm saying that right. The Terra Queen is back and she needs more blood. For those not in the know, the Terra Queen is the main character of a tale from the twisted mind of the storyteller, uh don't worry we'll get back to her later, who rules the land of Terra Crutus through might and blood sacrifices. On the final night of the event in 2005, she sacrificed herself in the ritual de blood. 
Uh, again, hope I'm saying that right. I will go into the full story of Terracrutus in this video. Lore knows we'll be here all day. But if you want to see more HHN lore videos, hit that subscribe button for more in the video. Oh, right, you didn't subscribe earlier. But Gorewood Forest is a place we've been to before in HHN. So it'll be nice to see where bone becomes iron, where flesh turns to stone, where the trees known as Gorewood are said to have grown. Of this place we sing, but no more is known. Of this place we sing, but no more is known. Quickly touching on the two mini zones, we'll undoubtedly have the chainsaw drill team over by the Simpsons doing their thing. CHAINSAW NOISES! And on the bridge between Simpsons and Harry Potter is a bunch of good guy boxes where Chucky will undoubtedly be talking trash and blocking traffic. Can't wait to see how long it takes for him to get in trouble this time. Over to San Francisco now, we have some love to my fellow YouTube brethren over at Crypt TV. A lot of people heard of this channel for the first time with the announcement of the scare zone and scratch their heads while I cheer for joy. Crypt TV is a YouTube channel that makes some high quality horror shorts with fascinating original monsters such as the Looksee, Sunny Family Cult, and the Birch. This isn't Crypt TV's first foray with HHN as they previously played some of their shorts and cues at the event. I wonder if we'll get a scare actor who looks like James A. Janice from Dead Meat since he's in the Looksee. I'll leave a link to their channel which has a playlist to help you get ready for the event. Although with 3.6 million subs they have like a hundred thousand times the number of subs I do so I don't think they need the help from little old me notice me senpai our final scare zone is lights camera action Eddie's revenge and no it's not the Eddie from horror makeup show Eddie is Jack the clown's brother and was the original icon for HHN 11 before the attacks on September 11th happened and Universal reevaluating having such a real psycho as their mascot since then Eddie has appeared here and there usually with his roaming gang of chainsaws however this year it seems that his scare zone is a retrospective on some of the past scare zones like fan 55 and treaks and foons there are still some mysteries in the zone I asked the HHN group on Facebook what this is supposed to be and could have get a clear answer so we'll wait and see moving on to our final two houses we have scary horror in the heartland I've mentioned before that Cary Ohio is the setting for a lot of things at HHN I won't do a we didn't start the fire rattle off of all of them but everything from caretakers to zombies to vampires and so much more has made their home in Cary if you're wondering why this random small town is always used it's because one day someone at Art of Creative asked if anyone was from a small town because he needed an ideal for a setting. A member said that they were from Cary, Ohio, a real place, and that the town is known for having a bunch of weird tales and ghost stories about it. And it rhymes with scary, so it's perfect. Since then, we've visited Cary two dozen times in the ensuing 20 years. Located in the MIB tent, it seems to be a greatest hits house of previous Cary locales, with dead end, Hive, and leave it to Cleaver already being confirmed as represented. It's unclear what else will show up, but it'll be interesting to go through this blast from the past. And finally today, we have my most anticipated house, HHN Icons Captured. All the HHN Icons in one house for the first time ever with all your favorites and not so well received, but we still love them, making an appearance. Jack the Clown, Caretaker, Director, Storyteller, Usher, Lady Luck, and Fear Itself are coming to get you. They'll be accompanied by their super fans, a nice nod to how popular and how much of a following these characters have. But what's really interesting is this might be a house you'll have to go through multiple times with the website teasing that a different icon will reign supreme depending on when you visit. It sounds like an all out war between these titans of terror. And to really understand why I'm so excited, we'll have to go to a deep dive of each of their backstories but that is a story for another video because this one is already way too long so make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so you can be the first to see that video whenever it comes out and also while you're down there hit that like and share button to help this channel grow so what's your favorite HHA icon leave them in the comments down below I'm Crystal Orlando and I'll see you in the fog take care y'all one love don't hurt nobody